Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, Instagram. This is Pastor Harriet Bradley. Woo! Once again, I made it. Glory to God, we made it. I tell you what, in fact, I'm right on time this morning. I love that. Because this God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I want to make sure that I'm looking in the right spot over here. Um, on Facebook because the camera shot is right there and then we got we got Instagram up here so I just want to say good morning to you once again I am here in Michigan <laughs> we'll be here for a while uh, but I'll be going back to visit uh, Atlanta in a couple of weeks but uh, you know this message today is it's, 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 it's personal because you know a pastor can't preach a message that they haven't that they haven't lived or are are not living and believe you me the message that I'm gonna share to you today I'm having to live so uh, uh, it, it has to do with being here and um, and just keeping my attitude right I tell you what God is good and he's worthy to be praised so I uh, just want to let anybody that's on, if you put in the chat, let me know, on Facebook especially, uh, if you can't hear me, but I believe you can. And uh, we're going to just go forth in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you and I worship, honor, and adore you. I thank you that you are Lord, you are God, and there's none like you, Father. Lord, I ask you that you will cause us to know what you're saying to us this morning. Holy Spirit, speak only like you can. And Father God, we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit today. We thank you and we praise you. We honor you and we adore you. Lord, I'm just so honored to be your pastor. I'm just so honored to that you call me to, to watch over your sheep. And so Father God, I thank you that I will continue to be faithful. Lord, I ask you that you will think through my mind and speak through my lips then I'm going to speak the oracles of God, and I'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, now, this is the third week of 2024. Last week, we shared about the importance of not only laying aside your past, past mistakes, past adventures, but to get rid of the shame because Jesus Christ paid the price for us to be free of shame. So we're heading towards our goals in 2024. So we're in our third, we're beginning our third week and maybe you've made some goals. Maybe you, maybe you've made some goals to lose weight or to be more organized or whatever it is, or to be, to walk in more love. Um, in fact, one ministry this whole month, their Bible lesson is 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 centering in on on First Corinthians thirteen and Galatians five, talking about the love of the Lord. And so that that is definitely your foundation. But just like I have been, I have been challenged in an area called complaint. And you know, the Word of God has something to say about complaining. And this is a scripture that I, this is a scripture that I had um, really took notice to when I was at Rhema Bible Training Center. And uh, so, the Holy Spirit has reminded me this scripture a lot, especially this week. It says, in Philippians, okay, in Philippians, um, Two, uh, oh, there we go. Philippians 2, 13 through 15. I, I'm going to read it in both the King James, the NIV, as well as the Amplified. It says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and do his good pleasure. Then he says, do all things without murmurings and disputings, 
that you may be blameless and harmless, the Son of God's without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. We're the light of the world. When you get accept, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we're the light of the world. Our light shines whether we want them to or not. Okay, Philippians in the NIV. It says, for, same verses, 13 through 15. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So in order, he says, so do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. All right, here's my Amplified. You know, Amplified is, is my favorite. As, as uh, Pastor Charles Patterson used to say, he pastored uh, Union Baptist Church in Lansing, Michigan, and he was from Memphis, Tennessee, and he used to say, my favorite scripture. He says, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire, both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Then he says, do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God. You know what I'm saying? When we, when we are grumbling and fault finding and, and complaining, it's against God. And questioning and doubting among yourselves that you may show yourselves to be blameless and uh, godless, innocent, and uncontaminated. Children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable un, un in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation spiritually perverted and perverse among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or, or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. You know, on a clear night where the, uh, where the sky is clear, there's no clouds, and you see those stars. All those stars, the lights in the dark. And that's what we are. We're the light of the world. So, Apostle Paul is addressing this to the church at Philippi. Why is he making such a big deal of this? Well, first of all, the Apostle Paul did not want these new believers to be like the children of Israel. All right, you remember the children of Israel. They were in bondage. I, I don't. It was a lot of years. It was a lot of years, and they had, you know, they were slaves to the Egyptians, and so when they left, it, it, as it says, he did, they didn't leave out empty. They had, they had the treasures of the people there, and they came out, and then they got to a river. Remember, they got to the river, and the Lord parted the Red Sea. They were grumbling and complaining. I'm like, okay. They said, you know, I should have, we should have stayed back there. Stay. They, were, they were in bondage. But yet they wanted to return back to that bondage. Then he, they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years because they complained. They didn't believe God. They didn't believe that, that, that God was taking them into a good land. And that they were well able to conquer the giants. Yes, God is going to send us into a good land, but there may be giants. But God says you're well able. Well able. So, so he did not want them to be like the children of Israel that were filled, like I said, with grumbling, disputing, with almost every move they made. I'm telling you, 
They were never satisfied. Oh. See ya. Mm-hmm. You run across a person like that. They complain about everything, not satisfied. Complain, complain, complain. But then they realize you got to look at the key to not complaining is first of all, looking at what God has done for you and depend on the Holy Spirit. Depend on the Holy Spirit to help you. To help you. Now, you said, uh, you said, you said this was personal for you. I said, mm hmm. Yeah, it is. Right now, I'm living in the present. I am living in the present. Okay. I'm originally from Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. As you know, I'm a Michigan State Spartan. And you know, if I was back home, you'd see my green and white. But these are the decorations in, that the residence in. And, uh, I, I, I grew up in snow. Uh, I've got pictures of me being a little girl, all bundled up, playing in snow. I mean, you know, we used to go ice skating. We did all these things. But, uh, you know, when you're raising it, you get tired of it. And, you, you know, you want to have some warm weather and that kind of thing. Well, of course, after I left Michigan and went to Tulsa, it was a little warmer there. They did have some winters. But then moving to Atlanta, they really don't have a winter. Nothing like this. Very seldom snows. You could have a day, uh, even in January, with 70 degrees or you can get 50 degrees or whatever. So I had kind of been out of, I kind of had been out of the, the winter weather. So when this opportunity came for me to, they, they were talking about, you know, coming up to work here in Michigan and I was excited. I was real excited about coming back and reaching out to the home health care workers here in Michigan. Um, my home state, I, I, th I thought it was just awesome. But then I got to thinking about this winter. And so, of course, we came up in the summer and, you know, people were talking about trying to get prepared for it. And so I really, I was like, Lord had to really help me. The Lord was, what do you mean he helped me? I said, I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, got to help me with my attitude about, about this snow. You got to help me. So now we're in the midst of the snow. In fact, uh, it started snowing. And let's see, what's the day, Sunday? Let's see, was that Friday? Friday, uh, I went to my physical therapy. And I went to Myers. That's a local. That's a local store, similar to Walmart, but it's Myers. It's a. It's, it's, it was founded by Fred Meyer, it, my, Fred Meyer in Grand, from Grand Rapids. I like going to Myers because number one, it's union support. It is a union. Um, they have a union, and so that means they got good benefits and all that. So I like to support union-based companies. I go to Walmart too, so. But when I'm up here, I go to Myers. So I went to Myers, got me got some food and things, and you know some. And then when I came in, an hour later, it starts snowing, and it hasn't stopped, and it's bitter cold up here. And so the one of the things, of course, that you have to do is that you got to bundle up. You know, you got to put on all these layers of clothes, and then then if your car is not in a garage, you got to scrape your car off. You know, all that. So, I've had a great opportunity to not complain. Am I happy about the snow? Not really. But I'm grateful. I'm thankful that I have warm clothes. I'm grateful that I still have internet here to be able to broadcast because they, they were afraid that we would lose power, but we just, we kept praying using our authority in the name of Jesus. And, and, it, and it could have been worse because some of the, the, uh, the storms have been scooting around us. And uh, I guess keeping an attitude of gratitude because 
my complaining, our complaining, our complaining up there at Instagram, our complaining doesn't do any good. Grumbling, carrying on, fussing. Mm -mm. And that's not God's life. That's not us. We, we are to be the peacemakers. We're the ones that are going to show that love. Because it says we know that we're Christians by our love. So, I've had to really keep my attitude right. Well, you know, I'm probably in anger. But guess what? It's, the sun is out. I'm grateful for that. Hadn't seen the sun in several days. It's peeking through now. So I'm grateful. It says do all things without murmuring or complaining. Guess what? It's a decision. You know, the scripture says, Joshua said, I, I put before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose life. Life is not complaining. Life is being grateful. Life is finding the good in every, in, in every situation. And you know, some of the people on the team had never really seen this much snow. And they, they got in it. They were, you know, some of them have never driven in it. And that, they're just like little kids. And so, you know, for me, it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my attitude. I don't know. Pray for me. <laughs> but I'm going to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will, I'm going to do this without murmuring or complaining. I'm going to thank God and praise God that he's protected us and that he's with us. But like I said, it is a choice. It is definitely a choice that you have to make. Now, we all have opportunities to complain. Um, I don't ever watch any of those Real Housewives shows or whatever, and a lot of those reality shows likes to have drama because they think that they causes ratings to go up. So I'm real careful of what I watch because first of all, I don't want a lot of strife. I don't want to own a lot of complaining in any of my relationships. So you, first of all, you got to be careful what you're watching and, and to realize, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And like the Holy Spirit will bring this. You know, when you put the scripture in, the Holy Spirit will bring it back. She says, do all things without murmuring or complaining. He does that. He'll do it for you. So, but when we remember that Jesus Christ is with us and we trust him, for the outcome of our situation, we will be able to resist complaining and enter and enjoy the peace of the Lord in, in a difficult situation. Keeping our eyes on Jesus. Keeping our eyes on the prize. Keeping our eyes on what God is saying. That's, that's what we're to do. So therefore, we will not complain. Now, now, here's like I said, Paul, just like Apostle Paul, he didn't want the children of Israel, he didn't want the, the, the church of Philippi to be like the children of Israel and always complaining. And neither does the Lord. And, you know, and the Lord is so good. We can complain, we can, you know, we complain and we say, and we go back to him and say, Lord, help us. Guess what? He's right there. He's always been there. He'll be there for you. He really, really will. There's nothing that God will not do for you. He is faithful. So let's look back in closing here. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. First of all, it says, not in your own strength. See, we don't do it in our own strength. For it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire. 
so it's inside you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. The Holy Spirit's in us, and that's, like I said before, we have to obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining, and it's never said against God, and questioning and doubting among yourselves. That you may show yourselves to be blameless and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation. You want to be a witness for the Lord? You know, there was a song we used to sing, my soul is a witness for my Lord. My soul is a witness for my Lord. You want to be that witness? Be one that doesn't complain. Be the one that does that walks in peace. I remember Kenneth Copeland was talking, and, and you know his wife Gloria. Whenever he tried to get a bus going or whatever, you know, in the early years of their marriage, she'd say, "I'm just gonna find." every way to be in peace and love you. What you gonna do with that kind of answer? And so guess what? It turned him around. And there are, there are you, some of you that are walking in this. You're doing things without murmuring and complaining. And even though the person may, may seem like it's not affecting them, but it is. It really, really is. So, in closing, remember, the Holy Spirit will help you not to complain or murmur. And if you do, guess what? Just repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. Maybe you have to go back to the person. But remember, God loves you. He calls you his great prize. And he wants your light to shine bright, not just for you, but for him. That's what it's all about. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for my Facebook family and friends, my Instagram family and friends. I thank you, Father, for what you are doing in us now. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, we thank you that even now the Holy Spirit helps us not to murmur or complain. And that, Father God, we are peacemakers. We, are, we show the love. We show the joy. And so, Father God, we thank you for what you're doing in us in 2024. Lord, I thank you that you're encouraging us to keep going on in what you've told us to do. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you so much for tuning in. But first of all, before we do, I need to uh, give people an opportunity to, have the, to accept the peacemaker. And who is that? Jesus Christ. So, repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and save me. Thank you, Father, that you died so that I could have life. I receive that life now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer uh, for the first time or you or you just rededicated uh, please let me know, and then I have an ebook that, that I can send you, and uh, it, it'll be, give you some first steps in what you need to do in your new walk with the Lord. Um, once again, at uh, 10 o'clock, will be relentless. Pastor John is, is, is preaching a message, Sunday is coming. So I'm excited to hear that. Uh, thank you so much for your giving. Uh, uh, Instagram, if you want to plant a seed, Go up to my profile and you'll see my um, the link for my website. Link for my website and you will be able to see the information uh, on Facebook. I'll plan. I'll, I'll post it and you can. Uh, I have Zelle. I have um, PayPal, Cash App, and then of course I have an address if somebody still writes checks. But most people are digital like I am. So until next week. Be blessed, be encouraged. Those of you in the cold weather, stay warm. Be bundled up, be careful if you go out. So be blessed, be encouraged. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.
Hello, and thank you so much for watching this video. I trust and I pray that it has been a blessing to your life and that you'll be able to take some of the things that were imparted upon you and apply it to your life for a better quality of living. So if it was a blessing to you, uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and the subscribe button if you wish to see when this content comes out. And if you wanna be notified when it comes out, then you can hit the little bell notification and you'll be the first to know. So with that, I trust that you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time.